All right, picking up where we left off on number 13. In the following figure, lines AF and DC are parallel. So we'll mark that. Using complete sentences, identify which two angles would be congruent to angle DCB and explain your reason. So here's angle DCB. I'll just mark it this way and explain your reasoning. And so if you look, since you have parallel lines, if you consider BC a transversal, BC is right here. The angle formed FBC and BCD or DCB are alternate interior angles. And so those two angles would be congruent. Then if you notice this little marking with the one arc in the corner of angle CBF matches with the angle over here, DAF. And so angle DAF would also be congruent to angle DCB by the transitive property because if DCB is congruent to CBF and CBF is congruent to DAE, then DAE is also congruent to DCB. So if you wanted incomplete sentences, angle CBF is congruent to angle DCB because of alternate interior angles. So I'll just put alternate interior angles congruent when lines are parallel. Just abbreviate. And then angle CBF is congruent to angle DAE that's given information with the little marks. So angle DCB is congruent to angle DAE by the transitive property which says, if you remember from algebra, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C of congruence, but we can just leave it at that. Okay. Next page, number 14. Segment FJ is parallel to segment GI. Make it a little bigger so we can see what we're doing here. So FJ is parallel to GI. Complete the proof that the measure of angle F plus the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle FGJ equals 100. 80 degrees without using the triangle angle sum theorem because that's what you're trying to prove is the triangle angle sum theorem. So we just follow the proof, look at the different things that they've given us, and um, they give us the given FJ is parallel to GI. Angle F is congruent to angle HGI. Those are corresponding angles and those are congruent when lines are parallel. Then we have angle J is congruent to angle I G, J, and we want to be able to say why that's true. And if you look, you have the Z here. And I tell my students that um, when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal and your angles form a Z, those are alternate interior angles. And because alternate interior angles are congruent when lines are parallel, that's what makes those two angles congruent to one another. And then it goes on to prove, but all we had to do here was um, say why those two angles are congruent. This might be a drag and drop situation on your test. So you would just take the alternate interior angles theorem, hover it over the reason for number three, and when it turns a darker color, that's when you can drop it. You wanna practice that. Angela has an angle measure of 230 degrees. She wants to know how many radians this is. Explain to her how to find the radians measure and provide her with the correct measurement rounded to the nearest hundred. So first you need to remember the degrees to radians and radians to degrees formula. So um, this one we have degrees. 
and we want to change it to radians. So if you have that situation, you want radians. You want to have a pi in your answer, so you would say pi over 180. Oh, excuse me, we're changing, I'm sorry, we are finding radians. Oh no, yeah, I keep doing that. We want to have a pi in your answer, <laughs> excuse me. And so we have pi in the top, and we're gonna multiply that by whatever your degrees are. And then if you want, if you have another, another situation where you're looking for the degrees, that's when you want the pi is to cancel out. So the pi will be in the bottom when you multiply by the radians. But this one, we have the degrees and we want to find the radians. So you just plug 230 degrees in. Uh, let's see, best way to do that. We'll just plug it in right here, 230 degrees. And then you just multiply that. Um, you can use your pi button for 3.14 times 230 and then divide by 180. It'll be an approximation, but to the nearest hundred, there would be 4.01 radians. But that's a fun little formula for you to remember for the EOC. Those two there. Number 16, Highlands Park is located between two parallel streets. Walker Street, and I like to mark my parallel streets, and James Avenue. Those are parallel. That reminds me of some, some important information when I get to it. The park faces Walker Street.